Okay, so this is 9.1 and 9.2, and we're going to talk about graphing quadratics. Basically, the graph, the graph of a quadratic looks like a parabola. So you see these are different examples of parabolas. Here, there's a path of water. Here, there's a suspension bridge. Here is an object being thrown, so it follows the path of a parabola. So there are different things that you'll see uh, in life, in the real world, that look like parabolas, that they'll follow that same path. So what is a parabola? Well, what does it look like? We're going to use standard form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this formula right here. And every component of that equation stands for something. So let's look at the a first. The a stands for, um, it's going to tell you how the parabola opens, if it opens up or down. So if the a is positive, the parabola is going to open up. And if the a is negative, the parabola will go down. Okay. Um, this is called the direction of opening. The A also tells you if the parabola is going to be wider or more narrow. So depending on if it's a fraction or a whole number, then the parabola might be more wide or it may be more narrow. Um, if the parabola opens up, then you have a minimum point, which is your vertex. So that would be called your minimum. If the parabola opens down like this, then your vertex is going to be your maximum point. So that would be called your maximum. It's the highest part of the parabola. Just like if it opens up, your minimum is the lowest part of the parabola. So I'm not sure if you can see here. There we go. But the B will shift it side to side, and the C is what shifts it up or down. Now, a parabola is symmetrical. It's exactly the same on one side as it is on the other. I don't know if you remember the absolute value functions, but they were also symmetrical. Very, you're going to see a lot of similarities here with the absolute value functions. And the parabola is symmetrical along its axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is an imaginary line that goes through the vertex which is the center point of the parabola, or the minimum or maximum. And this axis of symmetry is a line. It will be x equals something. And it splits a parabola into two equal halves. In order to find the axis of symmetry, we use this formula, x equals negative b over 2a. And if the, if the equation is in standard form, it's easy to find b and a. Those are the only ones that you need in order to find the axis of symmetry. So let's try some examples. Here we have three examples. We're going to look at what is the axis of symmetry, what is the direction of opening, and if it's a minimum or a maximum. Well, in this first example, my a is a 1. So I'm going to write over here what each thing is. a is 1. See, it'd be like an imaginary 1 here. b is 5. And c is 6. a is x squared plus bx plus c. So it's in standard form. Okay, so if I try to find my axis of symmetry, I would do x equals negative b over 2a. So x equals negative 5 over 2 times 1. So my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5 over 2. And I have to write it like this because it is a line. It's a vertical line that goes through the x-axis, and it's going through for this equation the negative 5 over 2, or negative 2 and a half on the x. Okay, because the A is positive, I know that it's going to open up. That is my direction of opening. And since it's opening up, it will have a lowest point, which means it will have a minimum. So go ahead and try the next two. Find the axis of symmetry, the direction of opening, and the minimum or maximum of each. Okay, check your answers. You'll see here. My A was 3, B was negative 8, C is 7. If you plug it into negative B over 2A, you get X equals 4 over 3. The direction of opening is up because A is positive. It will have a minimum because it is opening up, so it will have a lowest point. If you look on this one, my A was negative 2, B is negative 8, and C is 2. So when I plug that into negative b over 2a, I get negative 2, so x equals negative 2 is my axis of symmetry. 
my direction of opening is down since it's a negative a and because it opens down it has a highest point which means it has a maximum okay so let's start using this axis of symmetry um, in order for us to graph we have to first find our axis of symmetry because that's how we will find our vertex so again I'm going to look for my A, which is 1 in this case, my B, which is negative 6, and my C is 4, right? So if I want to find my axis of symmetry, I use my formula, X equals negative B, so negative, negative 6, over 2 times A, which is 1. So X equals positive 6 over 2, which means X equals 3. So here is my axis of symmetry. I'm going to go ahead and graph that already. So 1, 2, 3 on the x-axis. I'm going to graph an imaginary line. So I'm going to make it dotted so it doesn't get confused with my lines in my parabola. Okay, so now that x equals 3 goes through my vertex, which means the x of my vertex is also 3 because it's going to go through my vertex. My vertex is going to be on this line, so the x has to be 3. So in order to find the y of my vertex, all I have to do is plug it back into my original equation. So my y is going to equal, instead of x squared, 3 squared minus 6 times 3, instead of x, plus 4. I'm plugging it in for x. So y equals 9 minus 18 plus 4, y equals negative 9 plus 4, so y equals negative 5. So my vertex is 3 comma negative 5. So let's see, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my vertex. I know that this opens up because it's a positive, so it opens up. There's my direction of opening, right? Because it opens up, it's going to have a minimum. And now I have to find a couple of other points. So I can find the intercepts, and if I don't have any intercepts, I can find two other points on the graph. Well, how do I find intercepts? The way that I find my intercepts is I have to find my roots. And if you remember when we did 9.4, I told you that your roots are your x's. So in order for us to find our x's, we would have to factor. So if this is factorable, then I will have uh, real roots and I can use those to graph it. But in this case, there are no factors of four that are gonna add up to six, so it's not factorable. So I'm gonna pick other points since I can't factor it to find my intercepts because I'm not gonna have real root intercepts. So let's see, if I pick two other points, I want to pick two points on either side of my vertex. So since my vertex is x is 3, right, I know my vertex is 3 comma negative 5, I'm going to pick, let's say, 0, and I need to pick the same distance away. So since it's 3 away, I'm going to pick 3 away the other way, so 6. And since it's symmetrical, I really only have to plug in one of them. And I picked a 0 for x, so now I'm going to have my y-intercept, right? So if I plug in a 0, I have 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 4. So I don't even really need to do that because my two x's are going to cancel because it's times 0. And I'm really just left with a 4. And again, remember, 0 comma 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4 that it is symmetrical, so I can mirror that on the other side. So I know it's also 6 comma 4. And then a parabola is curved. Make sure you curve it. You don't make it a V because that is absolute value. And there is my parabola. I have my two points. I can find my y-intercept and mirror it on the other side. I could have used x-intercepts, but in this case, I didn't have one. So this, this is the last thing that we're going to talk about within the graph, is domain and range. And domain is always going to be all real numbers, and that is because the parabola opens up or down. So it's really going to end up, because it goes on and on and on, eventually it'll hit every number on the x-axis, which is why the domain is always going to be all real numbers. 
So negative infinity to positive infinity, if you remember our interval notation. Range is always going to be the y coordinate of your vertex. So if it's a minimum, it'll be greater than or equal to it. And if it's a maximum, it'll be less than or equal to it. So what does that mean? If you look at this here, my vertex here is 0, 0. So my range, which is my y values, is always going to either start at my vertex and go up, like this one because it's going up, or it's going to start at my vertex and go down if the parabola opens down. Well, since this one is going up, then my y is automatically going to be 0 or higher. So y is going to be greater than or equal to 0. That's my range, right? It's not going to go below that because the parabola doesn't go below that. And in interval notation, I would write it like this, right? It's including zero, so bracket zero, comma, infinity, because it's going to keep going on forever. Okay, so you're going to have to um, stop the video at this point. This was part one, and look for part two so that you can continue with the remaining examples.